White Christmas was the biggest film of 1954, and for good reason. It featured a cast that included Bing Crosby, Danny Kaye, Vera Ellen, and Rosemary Clooney. A score filled with the unforgettable music of Irving Berlin and a thoroughly enchanting backstage showbiz story. Rosemary Clooney remembers her first days at Paramount and how it took the studio a few years to even get the picture started. I came to be at Paramount because of White Christmas. When they asked me to sign the seven-year contract, they included the opportunity to work with Bing Crosby. Of course, I think that was all set with Bing before, because I'm sure that he had the final say. But it was a long time before we did the picture, because, first of all, Fred Astaire was to do it, and he had um, a commitment that couldn't be changed. Donald O'Connor was supposed to do it, and he got sick and couldn't do it. And then Danny was the third year, so it was quite some time until, uh, you know, before White Christmas was done. I'm dreaming of a white Christmas Just like the ones I used to know Bing Crosby was one of Hollywood's biggest stars at that time and had enjoyed monumental success with Paramount having starred in some of the studio's major hits, including Going My Way, The Country Girl, and the classic road movies with Bob Hope and Dorothy L'Amour. I met Bing when he was doing Road to Bally, and I had been to the lot a couple of times, and Bing was on uh, his bicycle, and his shirt exactly matched his eyes, which was a stunning thing to see, because he had great eyes, he had great blue eyes. Rosemary knew that playing one of the two female leads in White Christmas could only be good for her career. I wanted to be in it with Bing Crosby. I wanted to be in a picture that was named White Christmas because it was the best-selling record of all times. It was an Irving Berlin score. I knew that probably, possibly, I'd get a song out of it. I knew I'd get to meet Irving Berlin. Rosemary's voice, coupled with Bing Crosby's, created a beautiful sound in their duets that audiences loved. Very often, um, you have to break up a, a song for a duet so that dramatically it doesn't work. If you're worried and you can't sleep, just count your blessings instead of sheep, and, and you'll fall asleep. Counting your blessings. But we sang in exactly the same keys. So I could pick keys for him, he could do that for me, and so we, we always had the option of making the song as dramatically correct as possible. Sisters, sisters, there were never such devoted sisters. Never had to have a chaperone, no sir. I'm here to keep my eye on her care. Rosemary played the part of Betty, one half of a sister act. Ironically, Rosemary had actually been part of a sister act, working alongside her real sister named Betty. My sister and I worked together a long time. We worked together when we first started in Cincinnati. Uh, we were with a band for three years together. And Betty actually gave me my chance to be a solo singer because she suggested that we stop singing together and she go home to Cincinnati to a, sh a show that she was asked to do. But she wasn't really that interested in doing the show, but she wanted me to have the chance to go to New York because she knew that I had signed the record contract and it was important. Judy, why did you write the letter? Oh, uh, well... It because it's good business. You can't leave everything up to fate. Just like honesty needs a little plus, fate needs a little push. Judy, next time will you talk to me first before you push us and plus us right out of show business? Vera Ellen was cast as Judy, Rosemary's sister in White Christmas. Vera had enjoyed a successful film career starring in a string of musicals. After White Christmas, Vera only appeared in one more film, 1957's Let's Be Happy before retiring from the screen. It was funny because I had an absolute familial feeling for Vera because I understood that, that singing together, that working together. That was important, that worked for me. 
Vera and I couldn't have been more different from each other. She was disciplined. I have been told by excellent dancers and choreographers that she was the best dancer that was ever at Metro. She was patient with me. I would make mistakes, and I felt, I felt very inadequate, and indeed I was. There was one thing, though, that kind of evened out the situation, and that is the fact that she couldn't sing, so that her voice was dubbed. If they could have dubbed my dancing now, we would have had a perfect picture. Ever since the day we became producers, you were a changed man. You've gone absolutely berserk with work. And the strange thing is, you liked it. You liked being Rogers and Hammerstein. Well, it was your idea, you know. Well, sure it was yeah. my idea, but I didn't think I was going to create a Frankenstein. From that day on, I haven't had one minute I could call my own. What do you want me to do about it? I want you to get married. I want you to have nine children. The role of Phil Davis was played by Danny Kay, another Hollywood favorite. Kay had starred in a series of big hits, most of which highlighted his versatility for mimicry and slapstick. Danny was brilliant. Danny was funny. Danny, without giving one ounce of uh, control, he, as well as all of us, were aware that it was Bing's show. And he would make Bing laugh. And that would be his really happiest moment of the day if he could think of something really ridiculous to make Bing laugh. And he was very fond of him. And Bing was wonderful, but he was, Bing was a different kind of man. He was not that close to a lot of people. So I could see some disappointment sometimes with Danny because he wanted to be closer to him. But it wasn't easy. The film also featured character actors Dean Jagger and Mary Wicks. Apparently, there's quite a bit about show business I don't understand. Oh, it'll come to you, sir. It takes time. Sure, we wouldn't be any good as generals. You weren't any good as privates. Dean Jagger's career spanned over 60 years. He appeared in such classic films as The Robe, Elmer Gantry, and 12 O'Clock High, which earned him an Academy Award as Best Supporting Actor. He was such a wonderful actor, Dean Jagger. Just to watch him, to watch his uh, mind work behind his eyes was so interesting. The way that he would get angry with Mary Wicks and her kind of attitude with him was wonderful. Their scenes were good together. He was, he was wonderful. I won't tell the general you do it your own way, but I think bringing your show up here is just one of the nicest. Well, how did you know? Well, like any decent, self-respecting housekeeper, I listened in on the other phone. I just don't know what to say. Mary Wicks possessed an unforgettable face. That, coupled with her marvelous acting ability and sense of timing, provided her with a successful career that also lasted for over 60 years, appearing in such diverse films as Now Voyager, The Man Who Came to Dinner, The Music Man, and Sister Act. Mary Wicks, she was just wonderful. I never saw her enough. Uh, I used to send her a Christmas card every year. I, I did it for as long as I could until the list got to be about 600, and then I couldn't do it anymore. I would do tapes for people, sing a song, and then say something in between that was personal. And so I would, I would spend hours in a studio that got to be that way. But, but Mary kept all hers. She told me that, and uh, that, that touched me very much. Irving Berlin's score included songs that had become American standards. White Christmas, already the biggest selling record of all time, had been written several years before the film was made. But Berlin included new songs for the film, including Count Your Blessings, The Best Things Happen When You're Dancing, and Love You Didn't Do Right By Me. Love you didn't do right by me You planned a romance that just hadn't a chance and I'm through. If I truly say what is my favorite, it's the it's Love You Didn't Do Right By Me, because that was the one that Mr. Berlin wrote for me. He wasn't really on the set a lot. Now, when we were pre-recording, he was there a lot. He was there for every one. And at one point, it was, <laughs> it was funny because Bing, we were doing the, the, the ending, the final White Christmas, and Irving was pacing up and down and pacing up and down on the soundstage. And uh, Bing went over to him and he said, listen, there's nothing we can do to hurt this song. It's already a hit. <laughs> so uh, why don't you go over in my dressing room and sit down and relax? Because you're worrying me to death just because he worried over every note. 
Snow, 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 snow. It won't be long before we'll all be there with snow. Snow, snow. I want to wash my hands, my face, and hair with snow. White Christmas was directed by the renowned Michael Curtiz. Curtiz had an illustrious career and was considered one of the truly great Hollywood directors, having directed almost 200 motion pictures, including Angels with Dirty Faces, Mildred Pierce, Yankee Doodle Dandy, We're No Angels, and Casablanca, for which he won the Academy Award as Best Director. He was a brilliant director and told, told you very simple things to do. It was mostly attitude, and uh, then you, you followed your own... Uh, your own sense of how that person would behave under those circumstances. The costumes in White Christmas were created by legendary Hollywood costume designer Edith Head. Head had been in charge of the Paramount's costume department for many years. One of the film's gowns, a black velvet dress created for the love you didn't do right by me number, caused a big sensation. Everybody talks about the great dress and the diamond pin on my butt. <laughs> there was a, a pin that, that Edith had said, we've got to have something that just kind of breaks up that black velvet. And so that was what she did. She had a rare sense of humor. Edith didn't like to dress women. She loved dressing men. Loved Danny Kaye's. For instance, the, uh, the best things happen while you dance. That scene where he was dressed in gray. He had a gray-blue suit on, but the socks were exactly the same color and the shoes were exactly the same color. So the extension, the dancing, the, it was never broken because of, because of a change of color. It was just, uh, they, they worked together beautifully. But anyway, Edith was, uh, she was, she was funny. She was a teacher to begin with, and uh, she spoke, spoke perfect Spanish. And uh, she and my first husband, Jose Ferrer, were close. And, and she was a great pal. We just had great times together. He should have attended to the sick and let the well alone. That's a joke oh, oh. that was told ah, ah. in the minstrel days we miss. When Georgie Primrose used to sing and dance to a song like this. Unlike many films produced today, White Christmas had the benefit of a long pre-production and rehearsal schedule. We rehearsed so much. You know, the, the point is that we had uh, the luxury of time. Six weeks rehearsal, that's almost unheard of. That means that the cameraman knows where he's going, and, and everybody, everybody knows exactly what they're going to do. I'm dreaming of a white Christmas like the ones I used to know. The film's finale, White Christmas, is still considered one of the great musical numbers of all time. The final number, well, that wasn't a joy to work, to do at all, because we had little kids, and then there had to be an intercut because I put the package there and, and, uh, and Bing found it, so there was that, that intercut. And Danny was funny. Danny loved one one musical line that he had, and he would sing it so loud <laughs> that it didn't make any difference because we had this with the track, you know, but he would sing it so loud in addition to that that it, it would make me laugh, so we'd have to do it over. It was not good. Um, but it took a long time. It was just a big deal. Filming White Christmas was a monumental undertaking for Paramount with its big sets and scores of extras. It was a very popular set, and many celebrities stopped by to see this extravaganza in the making, including royalty. We had finished it, you know. It was in the can. We, the, the finale was finished. And it was huge and cumbersome. And, and may all your Christmases be white had been said, you know, and that was before lunch. And so just as he, before he dismissed us for lunch, my critiques said, uh, now the king and queen of Greece are coming to visit the set, and I want to pretend that we're shooting this over again, and I hear Bing beside me go, oh. and then we're going to pretend to shoot this whole thing over again. It's because it's wonderful. It's the end. It'll be something wonderful for them to remember. And I hear Bing say, not me. And so I said, where are you going to go? He said, I'm going over the wall. I said, you're not going to tell anybody? You're just going to go? And he said, yeah. 
So indeed he did. So his voice is coming out of the of the speakers and you're Danny and Vera and me singing, I'm dreaming of a white Christmas, only it's Bing Crosby singing. And he's not there, he's over the wall. He went to play golf. And may all your Christmases be it was a good time at Paramount. Paramount was a wonderful studio. Then it was small. Um, the dressing rooms were all around a kind of a grassy area where there was a fountain. Everybody that worked there knew everybody's name. It was uh, a nice place to be. White Christmas opened at Radio City Music Hall in New York City in 1954 to record-breaking crowds. It was one of the most highly anticipated films of the year. The appeal of White Christmas is timeless and continues to this day to be a holiday tradition. But the film is more than big musical numbers and unforgettable characters. White Christmas is a film that has created memories for generations of film lovers throughout the world and very special memories for one of its stars. My fondest memory is just, just being able to, to further my friendship, deepen the friendship that I had with Bing. That's the thing that came out of the picture that I was left with for the rest of Bing's life. That was very important to me. And then